This is my very first 3D printer from nearly 10 years ago. And this is my newest 3D printer from three weeks ago. So this one right here is my Bamboo P2S with the AMS2 Pro, which is, I, it, I love it very much, new member of the family. And this one right here is the Monoprice Select Mini. I'm not 100% sure if it's the V1 or the V2, I honestly don't remember but I bought this in 2016. I believe it was released in 2015. This is essentially the equivalent of going from a horse-drawn carriage to, I don't know, a Lamborghini or something. They're kind of the same thing in theory. You get in and go places, but they're, it's a little bit different in execution. So let's get started first by loading in some filament to the Monoprice printer. I'm going to use some bamboo filament just so that way we're, we're kind of on an even playing field here. I'm just gonna take one out of the AMS. And surprise, surprise, it's gonna be the blue. The Monoprice printer is entirely manual, so you just hang the spool off the side. I had printed this little filament guide because sometimes the filament wouldn't go where it needs to go. And then you basically just have to kind of put it through this extruder manually, trying to get it to go through here, through here, and into the actual tube is a challenge. Oh, this just came off. Oh, it broke. <laughs> Oh no, memories. Everything is completely manually controlled, so before I can insert the filament, I need to go to temperature, and I can start a preheat. You can hear the fan starting up over here, and it just has the tiniest little fan. It's pretty adorable. But that also means that printing essentially anything besides PLA is not super practical on here. I remember Back in the day, people like modding theirs to be able to print ABS and stuff. But essentially, if you had this printer, it was a PLA printer. The bed is also starting to heat up. I can feel that getting warm. And the bed has a 120 by 120 print surface, and it's just a piece of metal. So what you were supposed to do is just put tape on it, either masking tape or like blue painter's tape that I have here. You could also print on glass, and in fact, some of my earliest videos on this channel are about using glass beds on this printer, and then you have the glue stick and the whole thing. All the hoops we had to jump through to try to get a good first layer, smooth looking prints, high quality prints. Uh, just stick with the tape because it's simple. And then everything is totally manual like I mentioned. So I can leave this preheating and then I can go back into the move option and we want to move the extruder. And so basically I just select that and now I can move it. And so I just am manually loading the filament. I can see the filament in the the tube here so then I know I should start feeling it kind of stop and then should see a filament start to purge a little bit. We'll get the old filament out of there. I never used bamboo filament on this printer. This has actually been in the closet for a very long time so I just turned it on before filming this to make sure it like still turned on and stuff. We're gonna see how it prints. Props to this $200 printer though for still working seems like. But before we start printing, let's load some filament into the bamboo. And here's how you do that. I take my filament that I want to use and I put it here and then I go like this and that's pretty much it. And because I'm using bamboo filament with the RFID tags, it instantly knows what kind of filament is in here. And that means the printer can automatically adjust for temperatures for that material and also for the color. So if I wanna do multicolor prints or whatever, select colors while I'm slicing, it knows what color is in there. If you're using not bamboo, obviously you can load in that information separately and then the printer can still be aware of which filament is in which holder. This one has no idea if there's even filament attached. If I start printing and there's no filament here, it'll just go through the motions and print nothing. If it runs out of filament, it will just keep printing. If it gets jammed or clogged, it will also just keep printing and create a bunch of spaghetti or a big glob or whatever. We're gonna keep things simple though and just print benchies on these because this is also a very slow printer compared to the bamboo and you know, I want to, want to get home in time for dinner tonight. My kitchen's just on the other side of this wall, though. This printer just has a micro SD card that you load your files onto. I used to use Cura a lot as a slicer back in the day. I don't know if Cura's still around. I actually just added this to my Prusa slicer, and I think you could just add it to Bamboo Studio as well as just like a generic printer. But the print profile for this, they don't make these anymore. They haven't made them in many, many years. But there's a little micro SD card that I put some prints on, and we're gonna go to, oh, I accidentally extruded. 
we're going to go and print a Benchy. So as you'd expect, the printer just going to temperature settings based on whatever the slicer says. And it's going to home the print head. I don't know if I can capture this on this super zoomed in angle over here. There's no calibration. The way the bamboo, you can do auto calibration. It will set everything. This one, none of that. You have to level the bed by yourself by using some screws right here to kind of make things even. I think I did a good job a number of years ago because this looks like a decent first layer. And so as you probably know, there are a bunch of different ways to print on the bamboo. I could send something from my computer through Bamboo Studio. I could use my phone or I could just go through the touch screen here. Since I'm just doing the default Benchy, I'll use the touch screen here and we will go to print files. There it is. Benchy. Do, 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 do. We'll do a time lapse. Why not? And I'm going to use my transparent filament because it's really fun. So this has an estimated print time of 23 minutes. The mono price printer doesn't have an estimated print time, but my guess is that it's going to be a little bit longer than 23 minutes. I do actually still have the very first print I did on the bamboo, which was a Benchy using this same filament, this cyan bamboo filament. So we'll compare this one to the one that's printing now. But I also want to show you this translucent filament because it's it's kind of amazing, especially if you like the transparent tech from like the early 2000s, like the the blue Nintendo 64 and stuff. It's cool. Look at how fast the print head on the bamboo printer goes compared to the max speed of the Monoprice printer. Despite its slower speed, the Monoprice printer is printing. It doesn't look half bad for a very simple printer from 10 years ago. And also having these two printers side by side, you can see a big design, well, you can see a lot of big design differences. So the print head on the Monoprice goes back and forth and up and down. So the Z axis and the X axis, right? I always get those wrong. I'm an English major. And then the bed takes care of the Y axis going back and forth. Whereas on the bamboo, the print bed only goes up and down, takes care of the Z axis. And then the print head takes care of the X and Y. So it's, it's totally different which axis the bed handles and which axis the print head handles on each printer. I don't know what it means, it's just different. Well, we're finally done. The bamboo printer took its promised 24 minutes and the mono price took one hour and 15 minutes. So I finished this print, filmed some B-roll footage, ate lunch, came back, played guitar for a little bit, and then this one finished. So it's a, what is it, three times faster for the bamboo? So let's look at the print quality between these two. I do have the first Benchy that I printed with the bamboo in the exact same filament, and I was trying to keep them separate because I didn't want to get them mixed up. I don't think that's going to be a problem. I think I'm going to be able to tell them apart pretty easily. And then I have the transparent one in here. So there we go. Oh, it already detached. For some reason, I'm not 100% sure why when I do the default Benchy on the bamboo, it prints like on the side of the build plate. I don't know. Everything else goes in the middle. Like I said, there's probably not a huge risk of mixing them up, but you can see the difference in resolution. You can see just, just overall quality. And to be fair, let's do, to be fair, let's put the, the other bamboo in the exact same filament. So it's, it's much more of an apples to apples comparison. And there you can really see the difference between these two. The roofs also have some stories to tell because if you look at the Monoprice one, you can see there's there's some holes, it's uneven, whereas the bamboo is, you know, it's very, very smooth, it's completed. If we look at the deck, I don't know that I would want to take this ship in the ocean. We've got, uh, you know, we've, we've got a few, few holes to patch. If we look at the bottom, you know, this, again, the Monoprice one being printed on tape and then the bamboo being the, the really nice, you know, build plate with different textures and things. So there's, there's some improvements. <laughs> Look, there's a, there, there are just some improvements that have happened over the past decade. And then the other thing though that I wanted to share was just this translucent filament. If you look at this, it really looks like that old kind of tech gear. In fact, I was able to print a case for one of my wireless microphone systems. This was just a design that was on Maker World, but it holds all the different accessories. And now it, it really, <laughs> It really feels like something I would have had back in high school. So if you've been curious about the translucent filaments, this is the teal one. I strongly encourage you to play with them and have fun with them because they are really, really cool. And it's cool to also see like, you can see the infill inside of the prints. Now the purpose of this video, I actually wanted to put the bamboo back there because it's physically overshadowing the Monoprice printer. I do want to be clear that the goal isn't to just dunk on this old printer and be like, isn't it ridiculous that the old printer is bad? 
because this printer, without it, I never would have gotten interested in 3D printing. I never would have felt like 3D printing was something I could even begin to approach. I had so much fun with this printer. I didn't just go from the mono price to the bamboo. I had a couple other mono price printers after this. I had a Prusa MK2S and then my Prusa Mini, which is my most recent one prior to getting the bamboo. But I haven't gotten a new 3D printer in about six years. So on the one hand, I did want to demonstrate just how far things have come from this to this. It's and not really that much different in price. This cost $200 10 years ago. This was closer to 900 for the full thing, but the printer itself, just the core printer that will print a single spool, just like this is a printer that will print a single spool, is $600. So three times the price of this printer, but you're getting a heck of a lot more than three times the printer with the Bamboo P2S, that's absolutely for sure. And this whole setup with the AMS was less expensive than the Prusa MK2S that I ordered back in 2017. But the model price, again, was the printer that kind of opened up the world of 3D printing for me. So it's very special in that regard. You could do cool things, it is functional. I could dial things in a little bit. I could play with the slicing settings and the temperature settings and get you know a better looking print from this. But it's never going to be able to give me the quality of the bamboo printer, especially with the ease of use of the bamboo printer. And with different materials. We're just doing PLA, but we could do pretty much anything we want in the bamboo. And that's one of the things this video made me remind me about this printer. Everything from loading the filament, trying to figure out slicer settings, monitoring the prints. It is a very fidgety thing. And it reminds me of why, even though I really like 3D printing, I kind of just got less interested in it after a couple of years because I got so tired of fussing with everything and tinkering with everything. And that is why the bamboo has been, I've not been bamboozled by the bamboo because it, it, I've said this in I think every video I've made about it, but it's worth repeating. You spend much more time printing than fussing with the printer. And that's reopened the world of 3D printing up to me because not only do I not have to worry about the printer and I can focus more on printing, but also there are far fewer limits than there were just a couple of years ago in terms of the materials I can use, the type of models that I can do, the, the just all the different stuff and being able to leave this unattended more comfortably because I can monitor it and it will take care of itself if something goes wrong. That increases your ability to print more because all of those times when normally I'd be like, I can't be watching this printer in case it does something weird. So that means I can't be printing. Now I, I can. So if you're new to 3D printing, I hope that you can kind of see like now is the best time ever to jump into the hobby or into the field if you want to take it more seriously than a hobby. And if you're not new to 3D printing, but you've been out of it for a while, hopefully you can see just how incredibly far things have come.